So you're diving into the world of the Wi-Fi ESP chips on your switches and plugs and various other multi-sensors. You keep seeing all this Tasmodo and ESP Home, but you don't know which to choose or which ones to use for which project. Well, let's check out both projects, see some pros and cons, and then we'll even do a little speed test for you. Let's check it out. So if you haven't dove into the Wi-Fi ESP world, well, you don't know what you're missing. There's two really awesome projects that you especially see around the Home Assistant world, and that's going to be ESP Home and Tasmodo. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and give it away now. Which do I like better? Both. They're really great projects, but it really depends on what I'm doing it with. And well, some of the things we'll go over is say, if you wanna get it on a device, Tasmodo, there's Tasmotizer. It's pretty simple. You can plug in your device, they say an FTDI adapter through USB and just flash it with Tasmotizer. With ESP Home, it's probably a little bit different. You do have to go in and build the configuration and the YAML file and well, Thought we were moving away from YAML and YAML went away on the name for ESP Home as it used to be ESP Home YAML, but yet there's still YAML. Well, let's skip all that. But once you get your YAML set up and then you go ahead and compile your bin, you just simply flash it the same way you would for Tasmodo. So it's really kind of close on how you flash the bins to Tasmodo and ESP Home. So when you're jumping into this whole world of doing your own little multi-sensors and whatever it might be, you're definitely gonna do some little custom PCBs and you know, get them done at PCB way. They've always got some specials and some projects going on. Well, we even did our little solar weather center with PCB way. So definitely check them out. Some high quality stuff, PCB way. Now, so one part we wanted to show you how to say put firmware on say a popular Shelly device such as the Shelly 1PM or the Shelly 2.5. Well, for Tasmodo, it's pretty simple. Once you flash the device, go into configuration, go to configure module, and do check to see if your device is already built into the firmware itself. If it is, hit the button, hit save, boom, you're done. Well, if it's not, don't worry. You'll jump on over to the Tasmodo repository. Currently, as I was recording this video, you can see they have 1,200 devices with templates. So for this one, We'll go to all devices. We'll do a search for Shelly. We have the Shelly 1 PM. We'll go down, we'll grab our template, hit copy. And sometimes there will be other rules to put in there. This one's just explaining how to do the calibration of the power monitoring on the device itself. So we'll jump back to Tasmodo. We'll go to configure other. We'll paste in the template. We'll hit activate and hit save and the device reboots. And boom, we're done. That's it. The device is configured. No configuration files to mess with or to build different options or whatever. Paste your template in, reboot, you're done, and the device is rocking and rolling. You can see we can turn it on and off. Well, when we jumped over and tried to find the Shelly 1 PM on the ESP Home configs, scrolling down to the bottom, they do have a few of them down there in the cookbook. We didn't see the Shelly as well as we looked in the DIY examples. We didn't see the Shelly there as well. We did look on the ESP home device configuration repo. We did a search for Shelly, but sadly we only found just the Shelly one. So I have to give the nod to Tasmodo for having the easiest way to kind of onboard a lot of devices as well as one we have covered when we go through and don't have an unknown device, really easier with Tasmodo to figure out all those GPIO pins when you have that unknown device and you're trying to figure out the buttons, the relays, or the colors, or whatever it might be. Now, of course, if you did want to configure this device with the ESP Home, you would have to take one of these sample configurations, or you could build it from scratch, and you would need to know the GPIO pins. Once you know those, you could build your sensor configuration and put it into the ESP Home dashboard. One thing I do like to use ESP Home for, which if you followed some of my various videos in the previous channel, which I know you've probably watched them all, right? Well, if you look at the one where we did the bathroom sensor, 
I do like to use ESP Home with that because I can go in and dig through and set all the different settings I want to use on the BME280 and various other I2C sensors that are out there. With Tasmodo, you're just limited on some of the features at times with your various sensors, and it may not come out exactly like you want, which is where I do like to use ESP Home with a lot of multi-sensor builds. Now, one big plus about ESP Home is if you can't find your sensor and you're like, oh, well, this is a new sensor and no one supports it just yet, what am I going to do? Well, no, you don't have to go build out your whole sensor thing with custom code and everything. Well, you can take and build it straight into ESP Home using the custom sensor component. That is more of the little advanced user, but it is an option and I have used it myself with some of the examples on a Lux sensor that was not supported by either project and I was able to get it working correctly. We used it in that light bulb video that a couple people watched. Well, what about the GUI itself on each device? Well, that's really where things are going to get different. In ESP Home, you really don't even need the web interface because there's not a whole lot you can do with it. This is the one to that bath sensor. It does have, it shows the states. You can toggle the LED. We can't change the color on it from here. We can do an OTA update and you do see the debug log if you haven't enabled. And that's pretty much about it. But as we know in Tasmodo, you do have the GUI here that shows some of the states. You can actually interact with it with the toggle here. You can change the configuration. It's saved in the flash. You don't have to recompile bin files. And of course, we do have the console, which tells you everything about what's going on with the device, as well as you can do some debugging and you can put in all those different commands and set options and there are a lot of them. It's crazy what they've packed into this project in that small little bin file. Now you won't find all the commands straight in there because there's simply not enough room to fit in the ESP chip itself. But they do have a really good wiki that explains all the different commands, the rules, the automations, everything straight in the wiki. And I know this guy who's done a lot of different videos on Tasmodo on some of the rules. You might find the link down below. I do kind of prefer the web interface and being able to change things, but of course that is down to preference. So what about upgrading all your devices and managing them? Well, I have to give the nod to ESP Home because it does have a centralized spot where all your devices are listed. And it comes with the dashboard and you can see all your devices straight in there and do your edits and everything right there. But being one spot where everything is centralized, that's a central point of failure. If you lose all your configuration files, you just lost all your YAML files for all your different devices. So be sure and back those up, back them up and back them up in even a third spot because you can't get them back. With Tasmodo, there are some third party options out there such as TDM and there's Tasmo Backup to back up your configurations from all your devices. There's Tasmo Admin. There's a couple different ones, but those are all gonna be third party projects and well, that just wouldn't be fair to compare those because it's not from the Tasmodo project itself. So I have to give it to ESP Home. It makes it really easy to do your upgrades and manage all your devices in one spot. But what about integrating it in a Home Assistant? It seems like it's such a chore to get things into Tasmodo from Home Assistant. Well, if you haven't seen how to use the auto discovery, it's very simple to do. You can see once we have put in our MQTT information for our MQTT broker, and we'll set a friendly name, Shelly One Switch. We'll save it. Because if you don't set that, you'll have all your switches set as Tasmodo as the name, and that's going to get confusing. But to go at it in Home Assistant, you jump into the console on Tasmodo, set option 19, space 1, and hit enter. And that's pretty much it. By the time you flip over to Home Assistant, you can go to Integrations. We'll jump into Configuration. We'll go to Integrations. We'll go to MQTT. And you can see we have our Shelly One switch right here. Now, don't worry if you will see the unknown, but that will populate here in a couple minutes. But as you can see, there's no YAML to mess with. You can just add it straight to Lovelace and it will automatically build that card for you and bring it straight into your GUI with all everything. And you can turn the switch on and off. 
and you're pretty much done and there's no YAML code or anything to mess with and bring it straight into Home Assistant. So for ESP Home, we have a power monitoring simple plug we're gonna bring in. And first we do need to find the IP address because I do use different subnets for my IoT devices and Home Assistant. So I do need to put the IP address in. I can flip over to my Home Assistant, configuration, integrations, and we'll search for ESP Home. Put an IP address, hit submit, hit finish, and we do see our device that is already configured. We can hit add to Lovelace and bring it straight into Home Assistant. So pretty much the same for integrations between Tasmodo and ESP Home. But I will say in outside of the Home Assistant world, it's probably a little easier for some if they're using like OpenHAB or just straight Node Red for someone to use Tasmodo versus MQTT with ESP Home. Because ESP Home has a little tighter integration design just for Home Assistant where Tasmodo has it for several different home automation softwares. But for the Home Assistant world, it's gonna be pretty much a draw. So I hear a lot of things about, hey, the native API is better than MQTT and MQTT is just hard to use. Well, typically the problem I've normally seen is for some reason the integration doesn't let Home Assistant log in correctly to MQTT. I'm not sure why that is at times, but be all the Tasmodo devices will be logged into MQTT without an issue. So possibly it may offer some users just easier to get things into Home Assistant with API. Well, what about the speed between the two? Is MQTT faster? It's been around longer. It's got better support, everything. Maybe it, the API is faster. We did put ESP Home and Tasmodo on two identical plugs, plugged them into the same plug. They're on the same Wi-Fi. We tr put them on the same Home Assistant, tried to make everything the same, except for them having this different software of Tasmodo versus ESP Home. Now, which do you think is gonna be faster? Let's go ahead and check it out. So in this configuration, we wanna test Home Assistant sending a signal to Tasmodo or ESP Home One's configured through API and one's through MQTT, of course. Well, we want to be able to see what the speed difference is by sending the same signal at the same time to both devices. And we're going to do that with just using the toggle on the card itself. And that's going to bring the LED on the both plugs. Now, in some cases, you can see that one LED turns on a split second before the other, but for the most part, they are turning on and off at the same exact time. Now, maybe that might be a little bit of difference with Home Assistant choosing to turn on one before the other in the internal, we just don't know, but really we couldn't find any type of speed difference from sending a signal from Home Assistant through MQTT and then using the API with ESP Home. So it's really a draw on the speed. If you see an instance where it's much faster between the two, be sure and comment down below and let us know. I'd like to see that one. So before we go, what about button presses? We've got to test that, right? That's where some people say when they go to push the button, they've got to delay with Tasmodo. Well, let's check it out here. The button pushes are going to turn on the LED and I'm going to attempt to push them at the same exact time. Now some will say, well, there it is. Tasmodo's slower, you see it? Let me show you why. There is a multi-press feature that is set in Tasmodo itself. So of course, Tasmodo is the one on the left and you will see, I am pushing that button and you can see it does take a half a second or so for the device to trigger the LED. So if you wanna speed up your button presses on Tasmodo, it's a real simple option. If you go to the console and type set option 13 space one, and that's where the magic happens. Now you'll notice when I push the button on Tasmodo, it's instant, just like it is on ESP home. There's no real speed difference that I've been able to find on the buttons. And of course, if I can push them at the same exact time, and you can see I'm pushing the same time and the car down at the bottom, they're turning on at the same exact time. So with the input and output of Tasmodo versus ESP Home, the same exact speed. 
So that about wraps it up. Hate to burst your bubble if you thought there was a speed difference, but hey, that's great that there isn't. It really allows us to go and use either project to fit the solution that we're needing to do. Now, sometimes it can be confusing with some devices on Tasmodo versus ESP Home, like say the light bulbs on ESP Home. I don't know why that, that hasn't changed, but whatever. Now, I know there's been thousands of thousands of hours between the development of Tasmodo and ESP Home. They're really great projects. So try them both out and figure out the best one to solve the problem which you have with your smart home. So I appreciate you watching. Thanks to all the Patreon subscribers out there. I do appreciate it. It brings new content and new projects to the channel each week. If you haven't already, be sure and check us out in Discord. Come hang out with us, have some fun, learn some things, or, well, just do whatever. That's all for this one, and y'all take care. And we have done that before with some of the different velocity. I cut all of that. I screwed it all up. <laughs>